Your Excellency, Bishop Fidelis, the Reverend Fathers, my dear brothers and sisters in Christ, and Jasper, our brother, soon to be father. You bring to the ministry of priests in the Archdiocese of Lingen, the Gupan, long experiences in the professional field. To say that you have long experiences being brought to the priesthood is actually the polite way of saying ang tanda mo nang nagpari. You are not old. You are just more experienced than your batchmates. There is no late vocation. There is only a late realization that you are being called. From Basista to Virgen Milagrosa University to being an engineer, working in Binondo, working in Quezon City, and then looking for the meaning of life, you have many and varied experiences. And when you enter the Holy Apostles Senior Seminary, and then later on to the Mary Help of Christians Theology Seminary, we gave you many more avenues pathways of more experiences, meeting theologians through their writings, meeting the poor in their communities, meeting children in their difficulties, meeting young people in their joy of serving the Lord. Your heart is full of experiences, pastoral experiences, academic experiences, spiritual experiences during the retreats, all of these you now bring to the altar of the Lord as a priest in a few minutes. But today is the Feast of the Holy Innocents. What is more, what is more important? Experience or innocence? Truth be told, Jasper, because we are experienced people, we tend to be sophisticated. We tend to complicate simple matters because we say we have many experiences. It is quite curious that there is a feast of holy innocence, but there is no feast of holy experienced people. Innocence is exalted on the day of your ordination. So how should you be? Should you be an innocent priest? Or should you be an experienced seminarian waiting for ordination? Which way? Which is more important? We sang glory to God and the choir sang it so well. But after the choir sang glory to God, we heard the word of God. Rachel is crying because her children are no more. Which is more important, to be a priest celebrating with joy or to be a priest knowing how to cry? Which is more important, to lay your head on the chest of the Lord as a contemplative, as a praying priest, or to be a missionary of mercy, to be a missionary of charity, to be an apostle to people who are looking for God. Which is more important to become a missionary and say, I baptize you in the name of the Father, or to be hidden by the chest of the Lord and contemplate His heartbeat like Saint John the Beloved. Which is more important? Is it innocence or experience? Is it tears or is it joy? Is it contemplation or is it ministry 
and mission. Which is more important? Jasper, both are important if you only remember one thing. Only by the mercy of God. Only by the mercy of God. Dahil lang sa awa ng Diyos. Sola per misericordiam Dei. Lapot sa ipanangasi na Diyos naman. Innocence separated from God is ignorance. And it is an imperfection that God does not deserve from you. But experience separated from God is vanity for your intelligence. It can make you proud and arrogant and say you are better than the rest because you say experience is the best teacher. Tears without the mercy of God can only be depression. Sacrifice without the mercy of God can only be masochism. But joy without the mercy of God is hedonism. Glory to God without the mercy of God is a noisy gong or a clanging cymbal. Ministry without God, without the mercy of God, is just social work, philanthropic work. Prayer without the mercy of God is simply soliloquy. You're only talk talking to yourself. In other words, what makes your life different is sola per misericordiam Dei. Only by the grace of God. Dahil lamang sa awa ng Diyos that innocence becomes sanctifying, that experiences become sanctifying, that tears become sanctifying, that joy becomes sanctifying, that our mission becomes sanctifying, that our contemplation becomes sanctifying, our sacrifices become sanctifying because of the mercy of God, and our joys and our comforts become sanctifying also because of the mercy of God. Jasper, never allow yourself to be separated from that mercy. Deliberately, we pray together the chaplet of divine mercy early in the morning today. And I want you to remember when you wake up, when you go to sleep, when you eat, when you study, it is the mercy of God that will carry you through. It is the mercy of God that makes you a priest, a standout from the rest. But believe me, Jasper, there will come a time when the mercy of God will be eased out of your life. There will come a time when the constant hearing of those words, Ang galing mo, Father. Ang guwapo mo, Father. Ang buti-buti mo, Father. Ang bait-bait mo, Father. Ang tapang-tapang mo, Father. Because of constantly hearing this, you will start to believe that it is not really mercy, that it is your willpower, that it is your achievement, that it is your eloquence, that it is your research, that it is your experiences that makes you a good priest. The temptation of the priesthood is not about women. The temptation of the priesthood is not about more money. The temptation of the priesthood is not about disobedience to the bishop. You know what is the first temptation? It is the first temptation that Adam and Eve also received when the devil said to both of them, Awa ng Diyos, don't believe Him. Because if you eat this fruit, you're going to be wise. You're going to be more intelligent. You're going to know what is evil and what is good. He is telling you not to eat it because it is going to make you better. 
and God does not like you to be better. God wants you to submit to Him. And when that time comes, Jasper, when the awa ng Dios is become has become less and less visible in your life, when the awa ng Dios is already on the sidewalk and not on the main street, believe me, my dear brother, you need to return to it. You need to return to it. Because only by the grace of God can you live as a priest, can you move on as a priest, can you die as a priest. And when you die, people you leave behind will be able to exclaim about your life, what a good and holy priest we saw in Father Jasper. Jasper, I am very sure you have heard me say this time and again when you were in formation in Palapad about a brother priest of mine who was assigned to take care of the children in the cancer ward of a hospital. And his task was to prepare the little boy to die because he was a terminal case. But as the years and the months and the weeks came by, there was a glow in the little boy's face that the priest hospital chaplain could not understand and figure out. But through the months that my chaplain priest has been counseling and guiding, finally he had the courage one morning and said, Michael, do you know you're dying? And Michael said, Yes, Father. But you seem to be happy. And you make me happy each time I see you. And Michael said, Yes, indeed, Father, I'm happy. Are you not afraid to die? And the little boy said, Father, if God is like you, I am not afraid to die. Jasper, may you be that priest only by the grace of God. It is not counseling. It is not psychotherapy. All of these are helps. But the only means to be a good priest is to rely, to stand, to lean on the mercy of God. Because separated from that mercy, you're going to be nothing. Separated from that mercy, you will just be part of the expression, a temple prostitute. You get paid for religious services, but you are nothing. You are nothing. Because separated from that mercy, we are nothing. So Jasper, may people see you and not be afraid to die, not be afraid to live, not be afraid to stand up. Sola per misericordiam Dei, lapot sa ipanangasi ng Diyos labat, sa awa ng Diyos, sa awa lang ng Diyos. In innocence or experience, in sacrifice or feast, in tears or in gladness, in kiri eleison, all glory and excelsis Deo, it is awa ng Dios that will carry you through. Jasper, God calls you. Follow Him. Ask for His mercy, and He will help you to become the priest of mercy that you have been destined to be even before you were born.